public architectures. So, see, I hope, I hope you have little idea about what CPUs are. Okay. So, in, in CPUs, we have a processor code, which we, here we are calling that processing element, and each processing element can access the memory. But now we can see that data reuse remains small. Okay, here the data reuse remains small. Whereas on the right side, we have a very simple idea of what a systolic array is. Here, you know, we have many, many processing elements, and every processing element is, is not directly accessing the memory. Okay, for example, in this case, only one processing element is accessing the memory. And whatever data this first processing element accesses, it passes to the next processing element, then to the next processing element, and so on. Uh, and till, till the last processing element, we, we get the data at the last processing element, where we get the final answer. And of course, this final answer is sent back to the memory. Okay, so the whole idea is we are increasing the data reuse. Okay, so it is not exactly pipelining. It, it, it is it is somewhat different than pipelining, but it, it is like it is something to like. Uh, I mean, it, it it has some similarities with pipelining, but it is not exactly similar to pipelining. Okay, here we have uh, non-linear array structure, uh, multi-directional data flow, and uh, each B may have a small local instruction data. So now, uh, so what they are, that's not so important for us. So we, we could have a non-linear array structure. Okay, and see here, it is just 1D, it is just 1D, but next slide I will show you 2D, 2D systolic array. There it could have multi-directional data. Okay. So now let us see this. So we will see the use of systolic array for performing matrix multiplication. Okay. So we have 3 cross 3 systolic array. Here you can see this. So each of this, this square is actually a processing element. That means it can do a MAC operation. Okay. It can do a MAC operation, a multiply accumulate operation. And these are our input matrices A and B, which are both 3 cross 3 matrices. And we align them in time like, like this. Okay. So we have A0, A1, A2, and A10. Uh, a10, 1112, and so on, A202122, and similarly here, this is the B. Okay, so elements of B will go from top to bottom, and elements of A will go from left to right. Right? Going left to right. So processor arranging in 2D grid, and this, this alignment in time is, uh, you have to carefully observe, and this is time t equals to 0. Okay, so at time t equals to 1, only 1. Multi, uh, multiplication is performed. Okay, so A0 comes here, A00 comes here, B00 comes here, you multiply them here. Okay, so at this T plus 2, uh, 1, other, other 8 Ps, they are not used. Okay? They don't do any computation. Because of this special alignment in time that this will come later. Now, this is T plus 2, 2. Okay, at t equals to 2, you can see b00, which was here, now it has moved one step down. Okay, it has got one step down. And a00, which was, which here, was here, which it has gone here. Okay, so it has gone to the next p. And one more element from b has entered the systolic area here. Similarly, here also one element has entered the systolic array. Here also one element from A that has entered the systolic array. One new element has entered the systolic array. That means every cycle, and one more element will come. And in the existing element, if they have not reached their final P, they will further move down. So here you can see uh, this P, right? I hope you can see my cursor. So this P, it cannot directly get the data from memory. It can get data only what it can get only that data which was processed in the previous cycle by this P. Okay, so whole idea is data movement is local. Data movement is not from memory. This P is not getting uh, the value of B from memory, but it is getting the value of B only from the previous P. 
Okay. Now at t equals to three, t zero zero, which was previously here, now it has come here. Similarly, a zero zero, which was here, now it has moved here, and a zero one, which was previously here, now it has moved here. Okay. A zero zero, which was previously here, now it has moved here. Now similarly, for all of them have moved one step. Okay. So uh, b zero one, which was here, now it has moved here. A one zero, which was uh, Here now it has moved to this B. Okay, so it's just moving one step. Now at t equals to four, it uh, all of them further move one step. And but one more thing we see that now this this B has computed its computation. It only needed to do three multiplication, all of which it has done in cycle number one, two, and three. Okay, so here you can see cycle number uh, in cycle number three it has done its last computation. That's all. Now it is three. Okay. Now, cycle number four. Some more. Uh, now, now this is completed its computation. This is also complete, completed its computation. Cycle number five. This has completed. This has completed. This has completed. Only this we have not completed. Cycle number six. This and this also complete. And cycle number seven. Done. This has also completed. Okay. So in this way, in just seven cycles, we have done this three cross three multiplication, which required total of. How many? Twenty-seven products, right? So each P is doing three multiplications, so total there are nine P's, so they will do twenty-seven multiplications. So we have done them in seven cycles. Okay. 